It's time for Let's Go, the weekly anime podcast about weekly anime. So strap yourselves in as we meet the Let's Go gang. Anthony. Hello. Dwayne. Hello. And me, Brian. But first, the week in JoJo's news. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Season four, baby! Season yeah, yeah. four! <laughs> what a time to be alive, huh? I know. <laughs> we said that on Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> wow, this but is this JoJo's. Is this is very different. They've, pr- they've got a proven track record. Uh, how many times did we all watch that trailer which showed us nothing? Oh, yeah. it, was, <laughs> it was my daily watch at work for the day. Uh, yeah. They'd have to do fairly bad to screw this up, right? I know, yeah. but it looks so good. So just mm. seeing the to be continued thing, and then the music, the music plays as it moved across to Japan and pointed <laughs> at the correct location. They know I exactly was... what we like. Yeah. <laughs> if I was a dog, I'd have just been running around in circles and excitement. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but yeah, it was so much joy when Niall sent. That's tweet. And I checked it out on my phone and I was like, oh. yes. And then you watch it on a big screen. Then you watch it on Cause a big screen. Because cause it's like, if they do, if they go past part three, then they might as well do the entire thing at that point. Oh, I expect, I, I expect yeah. that's what's going to happen. I want to see a horse race across America for the body parts of Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's really important to me. <laughs> uh, wonderful. <laughs> Ah, that's the week in JoJo's news. Big news. So, let's talk about the weekly anime that we watched this week. And we'll start off with a couple of things that me and Dwayne watched. And we'll first talk about Concrete Revolutio Episode 2. But you also watched Episode 1, because you haven't watched it last week. <laughs> Dwayne, what do you think of Concrete Revolutio? Um, I'm so really far. enjoying it. Uh, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out what kind of tone it's going for because it seems to be kind of skewing dark, but it's it's keeping things like bright and poppy, like especially in palette. But um, yeah, really, really enjoying it. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering what other things they're going to hit from various different anime as well because uh, what have we got so far? We got, well, let's see, we got Ultraman, we got like alien invader kind of looking different style giant robot looking dudes, uh, magical girl. What's the main guy? What would you say his Jiro? Genre? He's got a cyborg zero zero nine. Yeah, yeah, kind of the spy kind of thing going on. Yeah, um, a transformer. <laughs> I'm counting the car as a transformer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you've got a ghost boy. Yeah, who, you got a yokai in it. Who so. is in, so? Yeah, episode two involves sort of Hal Furuta. Furuta. Anyway, this ghost who can change shape gets recruited into the group. Yeah, I, I'm still surprised that people had trouble telling their way around this show, like Nal was saying the last week. It's it, it's pretty obvious. It's like, yeah. oh, that, what was this sudden shift? It's like, oh, wait, the entire palette changed. Oh, I'm I'm in the future again, haven't I? Because it kind of flashes back to how they joined the organization and where they're at now. And also uh, the years in the era match yeah. up to the Showa era. And it becomes clear once you get to the episode three. Okay. This is not a superhero show. I mean, it is a superhero show. <laughs> what it is, is an alternative history show. Yeah, okay. Because specific events match up with specific events in our timeline. Oh, okay. I, that sounds interesting. So in the next episode, it, a part of, a, like a very small part of the plot involves the guy who in 1972 was discovered in a cave, still, still quote unquote fighting I World War II. I love that story. That's one of my favourite things, so... <laughs> that we, yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. So, yeah. That, sounds, that sounds really interesting. Like, every time they kind of pull the focus on another character, I end up really liking that character. Um, I, I thought that kid was going to be kind of uh, the the ghost kid. Um, I've forgotten his name again. Yeah, uh, Furota. I can't pronounce Furota. it. Fur- yeah. Furota. I, There's not, a lot of vowels <laughs> in there. <I> yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with them. <laughs> I thought he was kind of going to be annoying because I thought his character design is like he's got the cutesy dicky bow and the stripes and the suspenders and shit. And I was just like, what is the deal with this? And it's like, actually, I really like that kid. Will I like this show? <laughs> so, uh, I think so. Yeah. Cause I remember back I when I, we did the preview, I was like, kind of like eh, and then Brian kind of s- sold it to me. I can't remember how. And then we all kind of. I'm not sure totally what it's yeah. going for yet, but it's, I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. So 
I'm, I'm hoping they don't go, it's like, man, everything's fucked up, man. Because <laughs> I was kind of worried from episode two that yeah, might I'm, be what they're doing. But... I mean, it's very much set so far between 1966 and 1972. Yeah, and that, that's a is good idea. Seri- so, like, I'm not, is it like, could you say it's like weird palettes and stuff, but what? Is it a serious tone to it? it it's a lot of bright colors. Like yes, uh, it's serious. It yeah. has jokes in it, but it is a serious story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I meant, I meant just actually mm-hmm. looking at mm-hmm. it. Yeah, and um, particularly once you, I believe, I say episode three, which I've seen, definitely starts hitting more serious points. Right. Okay. And I believe episode four has some sort of big reveal, which okay begins to make more sense of the world. That sounds really interesting because I I had to talk about like the look of it because I love the the half tones and the backgrounds and everything the way everything's yeah. like just it's just a generally stylized background don't worry about that we're not drawing in all these <laughs> background people because that's just how it would have been done like um it's really nice really oh nice and the crazy uh, collage ending yeah <laughs> Jesus Christ that looks is... like some fucking Doom Patrol covers yeah they start <laughs> and it's like Daisuke's stream could barely <laughs> cope with the, the detail in it. <laughs> and they start yeah. bringing that in into episode three into the actual uh, oh, animation to a point. And yeah, again, it was like, oh boy, the stream's having trouble with <laughs> that bit in the background. <laughs> Rendering all the detail, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, really fun show. I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm curious to see where it's going as well, so it's got me hooked. Yeah, particularly that line, there's a line in episode two where Jiro says, I'm the only human in this room, and you think, yeah, what's the deal with those other guys then? Those guys look to you, man. <laughs> they've not shown us any superpowers yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, it, it sounds really I'm good. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I guess I can't jump in yeah, I, I think you'd like it, with man. this one, like I did. <laughs> no, but, no, you're better off. But on Daisuke, as we record, there's only three episodes up on there because we're already exactly. behind. So. Yeah, yeah. It shouldn't be too bad to catch up on. Cool. Hey, and. Episode three has got a robot detective, just like the one you oh, were going to cosplay. Robot once, detectives. <laughs> everything needs a robot detective. Everything. I know. I was thinking that as well. I was like, oh, sweet. I love robot detectives. <laughs> they mentioned him in episode two. And is he a badass? In episode three. Yes, he is. I can always relate <laughs> to the robot detective with no emotion for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm excited now. Oh, dear. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> that know him? His name is Raito oh, Shiba. Name. Good detective name. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the episode this week involved we get the introduction to Fura Uta, and we are also introduced to the idea that Earth was once populated by insect people, like giant insects, which have yeah, as in like once insects rule the world, and then amphibians rule the world, and then dinosaurs rule the world, and now humans. Do they rule treat? The world. You mentioned this jokes yeah. and stuff. Do they treat this as a joke, or is it? Is this like one of the serious business bits? Oh, okay. this is one of the serious okay. business bits. Yeah, I mean, like the, our other, I guess, main character, uh, Kiko, is like a magical girl, and she's yes. like, whoa, wacky comedy. But it, it's she's kind of like getting involved in this more uh, business end of the the, the, the this uh, everyone everyone has superpowers not everyone but there's so many different kinds of anime going mm-hmm. on at this mm-hmm. in the same world and um, that it's like oh I guess I'm dealing with this now yeah and also the format of the first two episodes and also the third is you see mm-hmm. something which happened in the sixties and then kind of how, coming back to the present yeah, and, and how then, that's related yeah, yeah. how that's happening in the seventies what's like there's something happens in the sixties which has a follow on effect in the seventies and certain characters are mm-hmm. behaving differently in the seventies. So do you think there'll be another the time 60s. skip which or at least a, another point in time they show? Oh I mean and they're not always the same time skips either. They're not always the same the, point okay. in time each time. Yeah, okay. yeah. And apparently there was an interview with the director who says this is all inspired oh, by Watchmen. perfect. That formatting. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, like, obviously this one's doing a lot more. We're showing the past simultaneously with the present, just to kind of give you a background on yeah. where, we're, where the show is going to be set. So. And obviously yeah, both the present and the past are both our pasts and also in a different universe, which is a lot like <laughs> our universe, but it's got super beings. Yeah. Every type of super oh, You being. got me. This, uh, <laughs> what, what with the title Concrete Revolution? Okay. Don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it just sounds it does, cool. It does. <laughs> but, I mean, the time period where it is, is sort of when you've got the start of the uh, new left student uprisings and protests right. in Japan, which eventually 
turns into sort of far left terrorist okay. groups in the early seventies. Mm. So that may have something to do with yeah, the Revolutio yeah. part. Well, yeah, if they're going to combine the kind of anime and manga of the time with the actual politics history of, of the time, yeah, yeah. that, that would make sense. And uh, I, I think that's where they're going. I, I thought that was kind of suggested by what the Tataros bug men were kind of like, I, I guess for the lack of a better term, protesting on Capitol Hill kind of thing. Yes, good point, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was kind of a similar idea with that, but yeah, um, that's cool. Yeah, and we know at some point, Jiro, the main character in the 70s, has turned his back on working for the government and is now wanted Ooh. for the government. And we just don't know why yet. So it's it's kind of got you hooked that way as well. It's like, wait, why? <laughs> wait, why? <laughs> ah, sounds good. I'm, um... I don't know why I turned a blind eye to it originally. I think I didn't like the look of the trailer. Yeah, the trailer didn't really give you an tone, idea of yeah, tone, yeah. story-wise, to give you a tone of the visuals. No, visually, great. But visually was all it what needed yeah. to sell me on it. Plus the fighter <laughs> and the director is. Okay. Like, I liked their um, Oedo rocket, which I think might be the last thing they worked on together. Okay. Which is a similar alternate history thing uh, about aliens who come to uh, sort of 19th century Edo <laughs> and get involved with fireworks manufacturers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the other thing which me and Dwayne watched was Peeping Life TV Season 1, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Still don't really know what this is. <laughs> yeah, neither did I, and I watched it, so... I, <laughs> did I can't you, did re- you have an idea after you'd watched it? Yeah, uh, roughly, <laughs> yeah. Because initially, right, I just found what I'm guessing was the intro sequence, and I was like, how long is this fucking intro sequence? Because it was like five minutes or something. Yeah, so Peeping Life has been a show which has been on YouTube for like the past few years. They've been putting mm. various series on. This season's difference is they've got the licenses to the Tatsudoku Pro characters and the Tezuka characters. Uh, I see. I've seen and, that in some of the previews, yeah. Yeah, and so a bunch of the sketches have those characters in them and then they finish off with a sketch involving some of their original characters. The stupid couple. <laughs> so right, okay. Is is the show? Is it just actors at like um, uh, crap? What do you call improv? That? Yeah, is it just yes, improv? It is. Okay. I, I, like, I didn't know it was improv. I watched it and then looked it up, <laughs> and I was like, because the beat, the pacing of the dialogue. Because they're just they're just like I'm uh, I'm trying to come up with something else, and then they just make up some other shit. But and yeah, one guy breaks. But it also it sounds, just, <laughs> it sounds more natural than the it does. Anime yeah, script does. No, no, it sounds like people talking. Yes. Absolutely. But it is like, what the fuck kind of script is this? Oh, it's not. That no. would make sense. <laughs> but it's good that they managed to stay in the anime characters while doing the improv. And right, they, yeah, yeah. And they obviously can't do anything too wild in the improv because they've got to use this very basic CG animation <laughs> to turn it into a cartoon. But the the appeal is really in sort of the dialogue and these characters acting in a strange way. Yeah, it reminded me of... um. Uh, what was what was those things? Um, anyone can make a film, and you basically like type in a script oh, for the different yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah. I know what that is. Yeah, yeah it, it's really like basic CG. And did you say you hear people <laughs> laughing? The... Can you hear them? Are you no? Yeah, I I heard the uh, on the, the couple you... one. They were breaking at one point. They just like oh yes, like... they yes yeah they they break, but yes. Oh no yeah, no, no, <laughs> no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds funny. That okay, sounds good. right. Yes. Yeah, where they're just like, this is seriously fucking ridiculous what we're doing. I was like, yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. Um, and this, I, this I was like, what the fuck did Brian get me to watch? Um, but then I was like, I was started enjoying it as it went on. So that was, that was pretty good. Yeah. Cause my favorite one was Black Jack going to visit the doctor and the doctor's, um, what's his face out of, uh, Yataman pretending to be a doctor. The guy with the big nose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and he's basically telling him all these things, and Blackjack's like, oh, but I'm a doctor, I know that, that doesn't exist as a thing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, it's, it's really odd. I, I'm not sure I watched it right, because I was just getting, I think I was getting the, the little, uh, sketches or skits or whatever, um, as individual bits, and I was like, I don't know if this is a, another episode, so. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, so it's hard and crunchy roll, so. Mm, yeah. Watch it there. And you'll get the entire thing. Cool, cool. On those episodes. Okay, so let's move on to the stuff we all watched. 
And let's go with one punch man first this time. Sure. The Modern Ninja was this week's episode where we meet, uh, what's his name? Speed Sonic. of Sound yes. Sonic. Yes. <laughs> Who is the uh, titular Modern Ninja. And so there's a terrorist group of bald men who don't want to work for a living. The guy, uh, the leader called Hammerhead, who looks suspiciously like a Toriyama character. <laughs> and uh, they are wearing power armor. And they're causing trouble for Saitama because because the police have warned people to be on the lookout for bald men. If you see a bald <laughs> man, go back indoors. And he's like, yes. he's will the lyrics slide, <laughs> That's the only isn't reason he, he goes after Yeah, this isn't that important. Then he hears that. <laughs> That's not a super monster or something. It's just a bunch of guys. Bald guys. And so, yes, these bald guys decide to go after some, uh, I'm going to guess, criminal rather than... He, he's, a, he's an industrialist, so they assume he made his money, <laughs> like, there's yes. no way he could afford to build a huge building. True. Yeah. With a giant golden turd on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> you think that would have been a good identifier for it as well, yeah. Uh, yes, because they managed to b- destroy the wrong building, even though the actual building does have the giant golden turd on top of it. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> uh, but luckily, said man has hired a bodyguard who he still, is still under his employ, he's still paying for him at this point, called Speed of Sound Sonic. A man who Genos later points out has a very redundant name. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, that was already implied from the Sonic bit. Also, from the opening sequence, I was full sure that that was a oh, woman. Oh, I've, I've, I've read <laughs> those bits in the, and I keep forgetting it to do it. I keep forgetting. <laughs> well, it's driven home yes. at the end of this episode. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Thankfully. <laughs> uh, so he thinks he's taken out Hammerhead when he, throws a ninja blade into the back of his head after he's taken out his men. But it turns out Hammerhead is very lucky in having an extra <laughs> thick skull. Hence the name. <laughs> Even thanks his mother. <laughs> <laughs> Later uh, on, yeah. Uh, and then the speed of sound runs into Saitama, thinks he's part of Hammerhead's gang. Uh, oh, is, there, yeah. that's, is, that, is that after? Yeah, that's after Saitama's run into Hammerhead. Though, yeah, he's, he's run off. Yeah, and yeah Saitama has a, has a very uh, shown in intro, introduction yes. to Hammerhead, where he's like, "It could have been me in a different life." <laughs> <You know? laughs> and Hammerhead tries to beat Saitama up, and does nothing. Nothing happens on that front. Yeah, I think Saitama just gives him an elbow just to destroy yes. his power armor, which is, you'd think would be actually do more damage, but no, less than a punch for him. <laughs> but yeah, then Sweet of Sound Sonic shows up and fight, thinks Saitama's part of this gang of bald men. And Even then... though he, he very nicely pointed out Hammerhead ran that way buck naked. <laughs> yes. I always thought it was butt naked. But... But. but he says buck. I've that always thought sense, it was butt. That would make sense, but uh, yeah. Butt naked, but... I yeah, think I'm you're right. Sure it's book. I, I don't know the etymology, but yeah, I think it's buck, all right. The more you know... <laughs> uh, but then once he sees Saitama's uh, speed, it becomes a test of his own abilities against Saitama's. And he keeps trying to not grin yes. as well. <laughs> he has a very disturbing grin. But the, but the best, but it's like which Saitama describes as an innocent grin on his face. <laughs> it's like, you, you, I see from your the innocent grin on your face, you just want to test your abilities on me. And it's like he's got this psychotic fucking clown face. He looks like... Um, uh, Hakaba from One Piece. <laughs> uh, which I don't know which one came first. Maybe Hakaba's a reference to, uh, that. Well, they could be both referencing yeah, something yeah. else as well. That is yeah. true, yes. Yeah. Um, and then he accidentally punches Speed of Sound Sonic in the dick. <laughs> well, he doesn't punch him, he just ha- leaves his fist out for the dude well, to I fall. Well, I said accidentally. Yeah. He do it deliberately. It's not technically a punch, so that's why he didn't <laughs> yeah, explode. Be the sad <laughs> but the irony is, is it hits him in the dick because uh, Speed of Sound Sonic was faster than he was expecting. Because <laughs> he says he was planning on moving his hand out of the way. He didn't mean to punch it. It's like, gotcha. Oh, I was, I was just going to pull back. <laughs> oh, sorry, dude. Yeah, I did think it was a girl for... Uh... Now, well, I still wasn't sure, and then that seals the deal. It's, um, it's bulge. <laughs> But the best bit after that is Speed of Sound Sonic trying to maintain his composure. Yeah, trying to stay cool, like. Yes. 
And I do like that because they keep it up because they shoot it from like, I think it's just the, like the shoulders up or something like that. It's like, I'll get you next time. And then uh, gradually do my training. Yeah. out to show how he sort of these <laughs> docking together. <laughs> um, uh, I'm sure Saitama does wish him well in his training. Train hard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He, he wants to get the good fight, like. Oh, he's no match for Saitama. <laughs> And then uh, we also get a bit with Genos. Is we meet the guy who uh, built his robot body for him. His ridiculous fucking hair. <laughs> who looks like a he mushroom. <laughs> What's his name again? I can't, I can't promise... remember his name. Oh, I can't remember his name. But he's promising Genos that he's going to build him a better body, which will make him more powerful than Saitama. Oh, did you notice in the background of that scene they have like um, I think it was his hair from the. Yes, I did. Yeah, when he got burned and it went all curly, <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm hanging on to this. Oh, I didn't notice that. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> and then Genos goes back trying to get uh, Saitama to uh, be his mentor, and uh, Saitama's not interested because he's depressed. Because nobody knows who he is, despite yeah, being a superhero. Yeah, the ninja didn't know who the fuck he was, and he's been a superhero for three goddamn years in this town. <laughs> and then Genos points out that if he was actually registered as a superhero, people would know who he was, because he was Moomin Rider, who's who they... Yes, uh, we completely neglected to mention him, because I thought he was fucking brilliant. Well, yeah, it, uh, <laughs> uh, in the printed volumes, at this point, mm. we've had like, one of the side stories, which I'm guessing they're not doing, because we've not had it yet. Unless they're going to like save a bunch for later or something, yeah, doing a different it, order. In this first side story, you see hmm. the it's basically Saitama at school, yeah. and like one of the younger kids at his school is the guy who'll go on to become Moomin Rider. <laughs> is he still very careful when he Exa- bicycles as a kid? <laughs> ex- yeah, exactly the same thing happens to him. <laughs> in the- <laughs> He sees some bullies doing something. He intervenes. He gets beaten up by them. And then Saitama takes care of the bullies. Awesome. After the <laughs> I, I did like the very careful, like, stop evildoers. Like, parks bike, puts down kickstand. <laughs> yeah. It's just like... <laughs> that's got to be rotoscoped. It was so, it like, was. perfectly awkward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was beautiful. What's Saitama <laughs> dreaming about at the start again? I should say rock, paper, scissors, but... Uh, it, it's, it's, don't play rock, paper, scissors with me with a booger on your right. finger I, or I something. I thought it was up. I thought, mm, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the bicycle repairman there got freaking all the credit. And, and it's cause he's not registered. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He, he, so, didn't, he didn't know there was an awful website for registering. I don't think he even knew there was a <laughs> association. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so he agrees that he'll take Genos on. <laughs> Only if he goes if with they him. Both... I know. <laughs> Only if he goes with him to register. Because Genos is also not registered because he's not interested. He, yeah, he's just wants revenge on the cyborg. He's not really a superhero. I love that, yeah. though. Or, sorry, not the cyborg, the android. We've all uh, done that. I've yeah. the time I didn't want to do something alone. And <laughs> have blackmailed <laughs> someone into coming with me. <laughs> uh, we're, we've all got a bit of Saitama in us. Except for, Except the, for punch. the punching Speak part. Speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we see uh, Hammerhead has been attacked by two mysterious beings who may be robots or cyborgs. One very stupid looking, one sort of an I can't remember looking. them from the manga. Yeah, I think they're in the section I've right. not well, read. Well, I'm a little bit behind, so that one makes okay. sense as well. So I've read the first two volumes, and then I've read everything after... Uh, oh, from where the um, fish man... Oh, I'm a little bit past it. that. A little bit. So I've read everything past the fish man arc. Okay. So it's the bit between this bit and the fish man bit is what I've not read. So when, be... when you say fish man, I keep thinking One Piece, and I keep thinking, it's like, when are they going to get to Fish Man <laughs> Island? <laughs> They've been there, gone. I know, I know. I, I was <laughs> just waiting for so long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't disappointing when they did, but yeah. No. But in their time, it took them two years as well. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yeah, so then, yeah, he gets a, they think they've killed him, but again, thanks to his super hard head, he survives and he's going to He's just there crying on the ground. <laughs> he's going to give up this bald terrorism lark and get a job. What a beautiful story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just oh, still a great show. Yeah. Four episodes in. 
I even like the eye catches, which uh, Speed of Sound Sonic got mm. this week. Yeah, I'm I'm loving them. I I didn't think they were going to do it every episode. I figured it's like they're going to just not do those little um those little unique animations each time. And it's like nope, they're apparently going to keep it up, which is great. <sighs> they're so lovely. And what do you think about the previous three episodes? Oh, it's been amazing. Last time. It's been amazing. I know I've not <laughs> had a chance to really <laughs> vent about it, but I'm just telling everyone they need to watch it. I swear God, there's not a person I have not told. Even my mum's watching it. No, she's, she's not really. She's not. No, I, I just think it's a great show. It's, it feels like almost better than what I could have even imagined. It's up there. It is up there. And... I, I just, if they said to me now, right, give me a hundred pound and you can have every episode of this season, I would, I would just throw money at them. Cause I could watch it over and over again, episode after episode. And there is no boring moment. And it's really funny as well. And obviously the action's just top notch. Top notch. Yeah, beautiful. Take a lesson, everyone, from this. I'm serious, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anything is, <sighs> I, I don't know, I could be wrong. But I think this is the best show of the year. I uh, think it's the second best show. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I th- currently, I think the se- best show of the year is the next thing we're going to be talking <laughs> Good about. Good season. <laughs> I was just about to say. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Mr. Osamatsu, episodes three and four. Episode three is called Tidbits Collection, and episode four is Let's Become Independent slash This is Totoko. But Anthony, you've watched episode yeah. one as well as these. You, I said you could skip to three and four because there's no real But continuity. I am going to go back and watch episode two. <laughs> Did you enjoy episode one? <laughs> I was watching it and I was thinking, oh, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know how I feel about this. And I was laughing. So I obviously liked something <laughs> about it, but part of me was fighting it, fighting the virus that... Because on, on, on the tin, that ha- this is not something I would like. Or oh, something I would maybe <laughs> laugh at and watch one episode and not need to watch sure. anything ever again of it. I was going to say, though, you like those Shin-Chan films Oh, Shin-Chan's a very special kettle of fish. But this is this comes close. <laughs> um, our first episode is like nothing I've ever seen. That is seriously nothing I've ever seen. And Had you managed to be... Uh, had oh, you of course, didn't have a clue. The, uh, didn't have a clue what was going to happen. And <laughs> it's still... You watch it and it just escalates. To the to the heavens, it's great. And I was kind of thinking, oh, well, I don't need to watch any more of this series because I feel like this has topped it. And that's it is, like, it is. I took a, a look at your friends. book and I was like, yeah, I'm content, but I guess I'm going to have to watch three and four for the... I'll skip two. It's it's no big deal, I'm sure. And then I watched three and four. Uh, the, yeah, the three also escalates things because episode two had been a two-part episode like episode mm-hmm. four is. Mm. Episode three, though... It's a oh, sketch perfect. show. <laughs> a sketch show which turned out to be too hot for TV. <laughs> How did you read that news? Yeah, um, I thought it was episode four got in trouble. Is it no, episode, it was episode three? three got yeah, oh, no, you're right, it was quiz. episode three. Sorry, I was mixing up the it's, two of them. No, not for that. For the oh, oh shit, yeah. I know, I thought it was for the bath. I was, because I saw there was news and I was like, I'm not going to look at why you got in trouble. I'm going to watch the episode and guess. What got them in trouble? Yeah, and I so, figured it'd be all those things. It makes sense now that I know. <laughs> it really makes sense now that I know. Uh, so yeah, there's three sort of, uh, I'd say standout sketches from this episode. Uh, yeah, uh, three main ones, yeah. Sure. Yeah, so there's a, the, the opening one, well, the, not the opening one, but the opening longest one is a saw parody where <laughs> Jigsaw keeps on trying to get revenge on one of the brothers, but keep, ends up either kidnapping the wrong one, or when he gets the, the right one, the right one reveals that, oh no, it was another brother who was actually mainly responsible for it. <laughs> I, 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 that was kind of the thing of, this is funny, it stopped being funny, then it got funny again, and then it stopped being funny, you know, it kept rolling yes, back around. it was like, how, how low, how far They like, did they test the oh, Damn it. <laughs> they tested it just right. <laughs> yeah, it worked out pretty good. <laughs> And then there's this recurring sketch where Decapan is a parody of Anpan Man. Yeah. Uh, and Anpan Man normally offers sort of bits a of piece his, of his head, isn't yeah, it? Bits of his body and stuff. Whereas Decapan in the 
original Osamatsu would pull things out of his trails. It was his sketch, was his idea. <laughs> and in this, it kind of becomes he's pulling bits of himself out of his trails. Yeah. Or the, things which the, appear to be bits of himself. The, the first thing is the one with, uh, the first time we see, uh, Toriko in, in the thing. She's like, she's so hungry. So he, he's like, oh, hold on a sec. Squads. Strains. <laughs> is there a nice way of saying it? I don't fucking know. And gives her, what is it, some kind of sweet or something like that? Yeah, I can't remember. I just assumed it was Olympic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I everyone is saying. That's the laughing. joke. Yeah. Yes. The thing is, all the things he was giving them looked like something uh, filthy. And then he would be, Shut and then the anime sensor police would show up and shoot him. Shoot him in the like back a of the head, yeah. as well. Like, I'm sure, is he chewing corn? And... <laughs> yeah, so basically all, all these sketches have now been censored when TV yeah. Tokyo screened it on satellite. Which is hilarious in itself because it's a sketch about censorship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which they censor. Uh, I bet all the writers were high fiving <laughs> when they got that censorship done. I've seen it uncensored. I was lucky enough to. Yeah, I was wondering if I get lucky, but I guess it, they just couldn't be our censoring it over here. It's like, no. yeah, we get the joke. You shouldn't give shit to little girls. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then the final sketch is the Osumatsu quiz. Oh, see- I agree they are the three main ones, but I really enjoyed the one where one of them is trying to get to sleep. Oh, yeah, that's, that is pr- really that's good. great as well. That one was pretty good, yeah, yeah. But there's I'll... a big pump noise when he's trying to get to sleep. And that was good. <laughs> Fuck, jokes are good. <laughs> the SOS quiz is <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> it's just one long string of dick jokes. I mean, it's dick jokes. It's got a couple of racist <laughs> dick jokes. It's fantastic. It just keeps on rolling. It's like, God damn it, you guys, please stop. And which which brother is actually taking the quiz? Uh, I, can't remember. I, don't I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the one that generally complains about their silliness. Uh, the weird thing is, I thought this happened last episode as well, because obviously not seen episode two. The way it's kind of laid out, I thought it was every week they played the dick quiz. <laughs> At the end of every week. So it's like, oh, this is... Oh, um, God. A little strange. That's yeah. where they end the show. Oh. I do have a favourite brother. It's the Kama... What's he called? The one with the serious eyebrows. Oh, the, the one who acts yeah, cool all the time. I like him. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, he gets a bit more play in episode four. Than yeah. In episode two. So, episode four, we're back to the... Uh, Two storylines, yeah, which are slightly connected by like a tiny throwaway bit. So in the first part, let's become independent. <laughs> They're uh, the five of the brothers, not Choromatsu, of course, because Choromatsu is the responsible one. Choromatsu's trying to get a job. He's complaining these brothers aren't trying to get jobs because the job he's try- he wants to get is becoming a manager of an idol. <laughs> <laughs> so in episode two, Anthony, we see that he's. Heavily into idols. Ah, uh, see. Which plays out in this episode. Yeah. And, but, so they're, they're happy not looking for jobs because they're happy to carry on sponging <laughs> off their parents. How old yeah. are they again? I, I, I... Right. Uh, in okay. their twenties. Yeah, I think they're supposed to be like twenties okay. at this stage. I think they said it at the first episode or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. They can say it's ten years. Ah, uh, see, I see. Right, right. And, but bad news, their parents are going to get a divorce. Because I, I had no idea who those two people were. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was the neighbors or something. They have like a second. weird similar yeah. hairstyle to the boys. <laughs> I think we saw them in the first episode, but yeah, that's okay. the first time they've spoken. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, the neighbors are at it again. And I was like, oh, wait, that's your mom and dad. That's different. All right. <laughs> and uh, yes, the, the mum can only take in th- three of the brothers. And so basically the entire episode is her interviewing the brothers to find out which ones she wants to take with her. I, I did like the recurring joke of, uh, let's see, you're uh, Choro Matsu. You know, it's just like <laughs> checking their fucking CVs kind of thing. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> it's a bit of a dick move from the mother there. <laughs> and it's another one of these ones like the, the uh, episode two's job interview bit. Yeah. Where you get to all the personalities come out as she interviews them. <laughs> As to which would be, like, a good person to keep. Yes. And it has, I, best line of the episode, I'd say, is, which one of you is the horniest? <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking brilliant that he, uh, like, 
after being initially rejected, he comes up with the thing of, I am stand the best chance of actually getting you grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, she's then obsessed with her own son's horniness, and the entire situation is very, hmm. And I, I got the one whose <laughs> who's name begins with a J, G, a, oh, the names of, I've just got a uh, bubble of names in my yeah. head. Yeah, He's yeah. the fairly one, I take it. Always the one who gets kind of caught in the bad side. Is that right? Uh, well, Aosumatsu's yeah. the main one. Karamatsu's the one who thinks he's a womanizer, but he's the best. Isn't <laughs> Choromatsu is the one who is basically the straight man in this? Yeah, he's often the straight <laughs> man of a thing. He, he considers himself smart, but he's not fucking smarter. <laughs> Ichimatsu is the uh, pessimist, the one who says to his mother. How can you afford not to take me in? What will I do if you don't? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I'll just serial kill. That's blackmail. Yeah. And also the one who turned into a cat. <laughs> never said so. <laughs> Jushimatsu is the one who's got to say. Yeah, he's the one who yeah. I have this like, and, fairly uh, guy who always gets the, the butt wrong end of the stick. I did like when they're... W- when, when their when their faces were kind of falling because they realize if their parents split up then they'll be out in the street. He just started smiling slightly <laughs> less. Yes. And his argument for going to stay with his mother is that he can throw really far. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'd be really good at baseball. It's like what are you applying for here? <laughs> and then you finally got Todo Batsu, who's the youngest and is actually a successful woman. Yeah, and he has the cunning ploy of making himself look above this procedure, and that he'll strike out on independence on his own without even going through the interview. To which his mother <laughs> says, "You're in." Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, I think he might actually be the smart one. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, dear. Yeah, that that was a good bit. It, it's it's kind of nice when they all have to play off each other. You think it would get like more confusing, but they are so well defined that yeah. they actually work well as a. And they're also color coded. Yeah, that they make like it easier. What, do they, like a t-shirt wise? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Do they have a different jumper or something like that? Yeah. That's the young one like, wears pink or something, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, he does. Um, they all got like one colour. I know it's like obviously characters. the one with the serious eyes. One has a bit more of a ruffled hairstyle. One has a bit of a vacant. I think that's a lazy one, isn't it? They all yeah. slightly. Yeah, Jushimatsu's, yeah, always got his yeah, mouth yeah. wide open. Oh, God. <laughs> Tonobatsu's got like a sort of a... Uh, his mouth's mm-hmm. slightly different as well. Mm. Like purse And they all mouth. look mega handsome in episode one. <laughs> oh, yes. I know you've already discussed it, but oh, when they show up, I was dying. <laughs> uh, and then the second part is, this is Totoko, which is kind of the first real bit Totoko's got since the first episode, when she <laughs> died <laughs> during the uh, the Bishonen version. <laughs> and she's invited uh, Osamatsu to her room, and he thinks he's going to get lucky paying off the horny bit of the uh, previous bit. Uh, but then every time he, th- he thinks she's about to come in, another <laughs> one of his brothers does. <laughs> uh, and then finally, a load of the background characters. Oh, we forgot to mention the bit right at the start, because it's the payoff right at the end. Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah of, um, uh, <laughs> where Sabatsu sees Iyami practicing his reactions. <laughs> Yeah, um, the the dude with the big fucking mouth is opening one of those yes. platters that you cover dinner with and revealing different amounts of shit from the same one. Yes, and to which he always doing his she <laughs> And a small one, she <laughs> Yes. <laughs> At different sizes, depending on... A different, yeah, different levels of reaction depending on the size of the turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. And it turns out that... Uh, Korobatsu and uh, Totoko have invited all these people here because they've got a, a put an important announcement to make. It actually turns out to be a press conference <laughs> in her bedroom. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to which, what does Jishimatsu say? Have you done porn? <laughs> 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 That's going to be what the announcement is because it looks like they're about apologizing mm-hmm. for something. Yeah, it's like one of those idle apology kind of. Yes, but the actual apology is that she's going to be an idol. <laughs> And that she hasn't sold any tickets for the, her first Idol event. Uh, so, it's basically begging the ball to buy tickets. I don't know yeah. why I found it, like, when they're swinging the baseball bat. I don't know why, but I found that really funny. They stood in the room. The, the first time was just like, dude, hand yeah. the fuck down. It's a and really small room. One Stop just... swinging it. And then the second time, he's just really like, motherfucker. <laughs> and the facts of oh, like, yeah, I just remembered, Karabatsu shows up wearing his uh, dressing gown, doesn't he? And a glass of wine. <laughs> 
<laughs> each other clearly uh, drunk. <laughs> and so, yeah, they all go to this because it's to promote her uh, parents' fish shop. And they all go to the gig and they're all complaining But when she shows up on stage in her outfit. <laughs> now, before we get to the outfit, when she's doing her idol dancing, is that CG? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, that's a... Because I, did, I didn't re-watch. When I first watched it, I thought, are they parodying idol anime by making a dance oh. sequence in CG? Oh. I might have to recheck that now. Fuck, I didn't know that. <laughs> That'd be brilliant, though. <laughs> but yes, she's wearing a hat, which makes her look like a fish. Well, she, the hat is just a fish. <laughs> her face is coming out of the mouth. And the bottom, the dress is like a jellyfish or something? <laughs> I believe there are very similar outfits in actual in Oh, Iron I'm Master. sure of that. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because that looked fucking horrible. Well, what's the... One of the brothers gets one in the... Is it an octopus grapple or something? <laughs> Sorry, not, yes. Uh, is, oh, which bit did they reveal that, like, the thing, something went on with her and one of the brothers and she, she patted him on the shoulder or something? <laughs> oh, that was um the... Again, what's your man's name? He thinks he's smart. Oh, the name's too uh, names. It's a third that's brother. It. I yeah. cannot think of his name. Yeah, Charabas. Uh, yeah, that's why he's yeah. being the manager. Yeah, he's being the manager, and he, he's like, uh, he's like, well, one time. It's like they're all like one time. It's like, <laughs> and they're like, sir, 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 and it's like, she let me pat, she pat me on the back, <laughs> and it's just like you motherfucker. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, they are all into it. Despite complaining, they are all fully into it. And they've all bought the merchandise. A, a pair well. are really rich, aren't they? Really, they drive a Mercedes. Yes. Yeah, they drive yeah, a Mercedes rich. Benz. Uh, <laughs> and of course, the reaction to all this, the fight payoff is the army doing the biggest she in the episode, and to the, bending himself so far backwards, he breaks the floor. George with his head. Pose. Yeah, he looks like he can cost himself. Ah, <laughs> oh, this series, oh, it's, it's a gem. And who'd have it's thought? Pretty it? fun. Not me. Yeah, I was one of the few oh, you, people. Oh, you were, you were big in this. Up, you were, this. you were on board. Yeah. Lucky guess, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing you knew the guys involved, yeah? Uh, well, I, well, I'd like... I haven't watched his Gintama stuff, but I've watched hmm. his uh, Good Look Girl that he did. Right, right. He did, did the anime hmm. direction, anime adaptation of that. And I, that is great all the way up until the bit where it has to, like, pay off the the uh, comics sentimentality. But while it, okay. when it avoids the comic sentimentality, it is double plus great. <laughs> Whereas this, no chance of sentimentality <laughs> really yeah. gets it. In Let's fact, laugh, episode like. two, they approach it and then spurn it heavily. Too clever for its own good. <laughs> well, not for its It is really clever, though. I think it's... Yeah, for dumb, for dumb comedy. It's nail it's on the head. Clever. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. So at, at this point, this is my favourite show of the year. I can't pick that as a favourite. Uh, not I, a comedy. Not I, I think One Punch Man is kind of a little over it for me. Uh, but yeah, it's it's absolutely up there. But yeah, and I just think it's crazy that we've got this and One Punch Man, <laughs> same season. Yeah, what have we done to deserve? It's like this? I said, the last day, freaking <laughs> <laughs> and well, the fourth season. Of... I know, right? Pe- people don't like. Oh, there's nothing good. And it's like there's so much fucking good there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, I what remember looking at this season and thinking, ah, there's One Punch Man and, and Lupin and. I generally thought everything else looked pretty right. garbage, apart from like a handful of blind exceptions, and then this comes along and shocks me for liking comedy. I like good, I like comedy, but it's rare that I would appreciate this this kind of comedy. But I do. Right, right, yeah. But yeah, it's pretty great stuff. If you're not on board, hop on board. You can even jump in at any episode, <laughs> but I would definitely say watch the first one. Yes, yeah. because it's yeah, the first crazy. one is. As you say, you've not seen anything like it. Crazy. Because <laughs> I, I, when I was watching it, as I mentioned last week, it's like, okay, this is good. They're obviously moving on from this sketch shortly. So, oh, no, this is pretty much the entire episode. <laughs> and I like the build, the, the, the kind of prepare you for, because I, I had very little knowledge of anything prior, but they kind of set up nicely. And, you know, you, you instantly yes. know where you're at with it. I was trying to go in blind on all these things on the original episodes, uh, the first episodes of things, but um, I didn't even know this was like mm. used to be an old thing. 
So I was like, are they just making up like an old thing? Is this like a Warner Brothers Animaniacs type situation? <laughs> that would be uh, or, or I was like, is this actually a reboot? And this is what the fuck they're doing to it. And I was like, oh, okay, I see what's happening as it unfolds. <laughs> Uh, it feels so unique. The it's it like that mm. first episode. Nothing else can now do that. That whole <laughs> this is what we used to look like. Now we need to create it for like new people. Nothing else can do that ever, ever again. Yeah, it's like they've got to that <laughs> joke first. It's like how Evangelion got to the, all, loads of things first, and now other people have tried it. Yeah. but you're always going to go like Evangelion. Yes. Yeah, sure. I mean, the best you could do is at least wait for, like, a new generation of anime and shit to have come out and be popular, and then do exactly the same joke. That's the closest you could do. <laughs> <laughs> I think this may be, maybe not the best series, but episode of the year. It's got to be that. that. That is the best episode I've seen of anything this year. That first episode. I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you might be right. I think mm. in terms of ingenuity and sort of mm. audaciousness... Mm. It could have gone terribly it's wrong a... and backfired. I know, it could have gone so bad. <laughs> but no, it did it far from it, I would hope. Yeah, it does make me wish I'd helped on to Gintama earlier, so it wasn't so daunting to see all those hundreds of episodes mm-hmm. lying in One day. <laughs> One day. <laughs> okay, anything else to say? Otherwise we shall wrap this all up. No, um... uh, nope. No. Okay, we shall hopefully be back with Niall next week. So be back here to hang with the Let's Go gang. <laughs> and in the meantime, check out our regular podcasts at Secret of the Sailor Madness.blogspot.com and dynamitingthebrain.com. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye.